Bridge of Clay Before the Beginning, the Old T.W. In the beginning, there was one murderer, one mule, and one boy. But this isn't the beginning. It's before it. It's me. And I'm Matthew. And here I am in the kitchen in the night. The old river, mouth of light. And I'm punching and punching away. The house is quiet around me. As it is, everyone else is asleep. I'm at the kitchen table. It's me and the typewriter. Me and the old T.W. As our long-lost father said, or long-lost grandmother used to say. Actually, she called it the old T.W. But such quirks have never been me. Me, I'm known for bruises and level-headedness, for height and muscle and blasphemy, and the occasional sentimentality. If you're like most people, you'll wonder if I'd bother stringing a sentence together, let alone know anything about the epics or the Greeks. Sometimes it's good to be underestimated that way, but even better when someone sees it. In my case, I was lucky. For me, there was Claudia Kirkby. There was a boy and a son and a brother. Yes, always for us there was a brother. And he was the one, the one of us amongst five of us, who took all of it on his shoulder. As ever, he told me quietly and deliberately, and of course, he, he was on the money. There was an old typewriter buried in the old backyard of an old backyard of a town but i'd had to get my measurements right or i or i might dig up a dead dog or a snake instead which i did on both counts i figured if the dog was there and the snake was there and the typewriter couldn't be far it was perfect pi- pirateless treasure i'd driven out the day after my wedding day out from the city, right through the night, out through the reams of empty space, and then some. The town itself was a hard, distant story land. You could see it from afar. There was all the straw-like landscape and marathons of sky. Around it, a wilderness of low scrub and gum trees stood close by. And it was true, it was so damn true, the people slobbed and slouched. This world had worn them down. It was outside the bank, next to one of, my, one of the many pubs, that a woman told me the way. She was the uprightest woman in town. Go left there on Turnstile Street, right? Then straight for, say, 200 meters, then left again. She was brown-haired, well-dressed in jeans and boots, plain red, t-sh- red shirt, and eyes shut down to the sun. The only thing betraying her was an inverse triangle of skin. There, at the base of her neck, it was tired and old and crisscrossed like the handle of a leather chest. You got it then? Got it. What number you looking for anyway? 23. Oh, you're after the old Murchison's, are you? Well, to tell you the truth, not really. The woman came closer and I noted the teeth of her now. How they were white and gleaming, but yellow, a lot like the swaggering sun. As she approached, I held my hand out, and there was she, and I, and her teeth, and down. My name's Matthew, I said, and the woman, she was Daphne. By the time I was at the car again, she turned and come, turned and come back from the money m- machine at the bank. She'd even left her card behind and, to- and stood there now with the hand at center hip. I was halfway to the driver's side, and Daphne nodded and knew. She knew near to almost everything, like a woman reading the news. Matthew Dunbar. She said it. She didn't ask. There I was, 20 hours from home, in a town I'd never set foot in, in all my 31 years, and they'd all been somehow expecting me. It was a long time we looked at each other then, a few seconds at least, and all was broad and open. People appeared and wandered the street. I said... What else do you know? Do you know I'm here for the typewriter? She opened the other eye. She braved the midday sun. Typewriter? Now I totally confused her. What the hell are you talking about? Almost in queue, an old guy started shouting, asking if it was her bloody car holding up bloody traffic at the bloody bank machine, and she ran back to retrieve it. Maybe I could have explained that there was an old TW in all this story. Back when they used typewriters in doctor's surgeries and secretaries bashed at the keys. Whether or not she was entrusted, I'll never know. What I do know is that her directions were spot on. Miller Street. A quiet assembly line of small polite houses, all baking in the heat. I parked the car, I shut the door and crossed the crispy lawn. 
It was right about then. I regretted not bringing the girl I'd just married, or actually the woman and the mother of my two daughters, and of course the daughters themselves. Those kids, they would have loved this place. They'd have walked and skipped and danced here, all legs and sunny hair. They'd have cartwheeled the lawn, shouting. And don't go looking at our knickers, right? Some honeymoon, Claudia was at work. The girls were at school. Part of me still liked that. Of course, a lot of me liked it a lot. I breathed in and out and knocked. Inside the house was oven-like. The furniture all was roasted. The pictures just out of the toaster. They had an air conditioner. It was broken. There was tea and scotch fish, fingers, and sun clapped hard to the window. There was ample sweat at the table. It dripped from arm to cloth. As for the Murchisons, they were honest, hairy people. They were a blue singlet of a man with great big sideburns like fur coat meat cleavers on his cheeks and a woman named Raylene. They, she, wore parallel ear, she wore pearl earrings, tight curls and held a headband. She was perennially going to the shops but stayed. From the moment I mentioned the backyard and that something might be buried there, she'd had to hang around. When the tea was done and the biscuits reduced to a nub, I faced the sideburns front on. He spoke to me fair and squarely. Guess we should get to work. Outside in the long dry yard, I walked left towards the clothesline and weathered. And a weathered, dying banksia. I looked back for a moment behind me, the small house and tin roof. The sun was still all over it, but reclining, leaning west. I dug with shovel and hands, and there it was. God damn, the dog, again. God damn, the snake. Both of them nothing but bones. We combed them close and carefully. We placed them on the lawn. Well, I'll be. The man said it three times, but loudest of all, when at least I'd found the old Remington bullet grey. A weapon in the ground. It was wrapped in three rounds of tough plastic. So clear, I could see the keys. First the Q and the W. Then the midsection of F and G, H and J. For a while I looked at it, I just looked. Those black keys like monster's teeth, but friendly. Finally, I reached in and hauled it out. While Careful, dirty hands, I filled it in all three holes. We took it out of the packaging and watched and crouched to examine it. A hell of a thing, said Mr. Murchison. The fur coat cleavers were twitching. It is, I agreed, it was glorious. I didn't think this was going to happen when I woke up this morning. He picked it up and handed it across. You want to stay for dinner, Matthew? D that was the old lady, still half astonished. Astonishment didn't trump dinner. I looked up from my crouching stance. Thanks, Mrs. Murchison, but I'm hurting from all those biscuits. Again, I eyed the house. It was parceled up now in shade. I should actually get going. I shook the hand of each of them. I can't thank you enough. I began to walk on, the typewriter safe in my arms. Mr. Murchison was having none of it. He called out a fourth threat. Oi! And what else could I do? There must have been good reasons for unearthing the two animals, and I turned from under the clothesline, the tired old hill's hoist, just like us, and waited for what he would say, and he said it. Aren't you forgetting something there, mate? He nodded to the dog bones and the snake. And that was how I drove away. In the back seat of my old station wagon, that day were the skeletal remains of a dog, one typewriter, and the hairy bone line of a king brown snake. About halfway, I pulled over. There was a place I knew, a small detour with a bed and proper rest, but I decided not to take it. Instead, I lay in the car with the snake and there at my neck. As I drifted off, I thought how, be how before the beginning are everywhere. Because before and before so many things, there was a boy in that old backyard of a town, and he kneeled on the ground when the... Snake had killed that dog, and that dog had killed that snake. But that's not. But but that's st all still to come. No, for now this is all you need. I made it home the next day. I made it back to the city to Archer Street, where everything did begin, 
and went many and varied ways. The argument about why, just why in the hell I'd brought back the dog and the snake disappeared hours ago, and those who were to leave have left, and those to stay have stayed. Arguing upon return with Rory about the contestants of the car's back seat was the icing on the cake. Rory, of all the people, he, as much as anyone, knows who and why and what we, we are. A family of Ramshika tragedy, a comic book, Kappa, of boys and blood and beasts. We were born of relics like these. In the middle of all the back and forth, Henry grinned, Tommy laughed, and both said, just like always, the fourth of us was sleeping and had slept the whole time I was gone. As for my two daughters, when they came in, they marveled at the bones and said, Why do you bring those home, Dad? Because he's an idiot. I caught Rory thinking it immediately, but he'd never say it in front of my kids. As for Claudia Dunbar, the former Claudia Kirkby, she shook her hand, head, and took my hand, and she was happy. She was so damn happy I could have broken down again. I'm sure it's because I was glad. Glad. Glad is a stupid-seeming word, but I'm right. But I'm writing and telling you all of this purely and simply because that's exactly how we are. I'm especially so because I love this kitchen now and all its great and te terrible history. I have to do it here. It's fitting to do it here. I'm glad to hear my notes get slapped to the page. In front of me, there's the old TW. Beyond it, a scratchy wooden table land. There are mismatched salt and pepper shakers and a company of stubborn coast crumbs, toast crumbs. The light from the hall is yellow. The light in here is white. I sit and think and hit hard. I punch and punch away. Writing is always difficult, but easier when something to say. Let me tell you about our brother, the fourth Dunbar boy named Clay. Everything happened to him. We were all of us changed through him.